Hey there Dangos2 here. Today's video is about my new Gladius Mini ROV and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. As I mentioned a few times before, my plan when the trawler is back in the water is to start doing some underwater search and recovery. I spoke to a few different companies about ROVs for supporting that project. A few people got on board, then sort of changed their mind, said no, yes, and eventually Chasing came on board and sent me one of their Gladius Minis. So huge thanks to those guys for helping support this project. What we're going to be doing today is getting familiar with it. I've never even put it in the water yet. I've done a basic unboxing. I'm not really an unboxing video kind of guy, you know, there's plenty of them on the net. But what I'm going to do is show you fundamentally how all the bits work together. Then we're going to do a bit of a test in the pool here just to get our head around how it works. And then tomorrow morning, Paul and I are heading out towards Lion Island to do a proper ocean test as well. So that'll all be in this video. All right, the basic arrangement is the ROV itself, five thrusters, so two going forward, two at the front here, one at the back, and the port that connects the tether, 100 meter tether. Then on the front here, we've got a 4K camera and two LED lights. On the bottom here, we've got a ballast module. This is obviously the one for freshwater, which we're gonna swap out for the one for seawater. I'll leave the freshwater in for the test in the pool, I think, even though it's a saltwater pool, but we'll definitely swap out for the seawater one when we head out tomorrow. I'm charging things up at the moment. This is the charger you get. The charger goes into the same socket as the tether for charging the main ROV and into this section, which is a base station. This is the base station that connects to the ROV. The tether has the same connection at both ends and that is the same as the charging adapter. So the same place you charge it is where you attach the tether and it goes between the base station and the ROV. Final piece of the puzzle is the controller here. We'll go through all the various controls once we've got it in the water, but what we need to do is connect our phone to the controls via Bluetooth, and then our phone also connects to the base station via Wi-Fi, and that's what links the whole lot together. I have had that part working, so one thing I can say is it just went really smoothly. I don't know if I'm just getting sort of pessimistic in my old age, but Normally I find that when you sort of get these things going, there's, you know, a few niggles, a few issues, and really there's not much to show. Connecting to the Wi-Fi was flawless, gives your password, a default password, worked fine. The app for running the unit, there's a QR code in the instruction manual, you know, take a shot of that, install the app. The app did an update of the unit, and I thought, okay, we'll see how this goes worked flawlessly, just did an update. So we got the latest firmware in the unit, latest app on the phone. Then once I had everything installed, the phone connected to the Wi-Fi on the base station fine. There's a choice between 2.4 gig or five gig Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth connection to the controller worked fine as well. So just didn't have any issues at all setting it up. And to me, that's always just a, it's a nice indication. I haven't taken it for a run yet, but it's always a nice indication that some good solid testing was done. I think, you know, if you start hitting problems early on, you're like, oh, here we go. But I had none, so I can tell you that that part I'm very happy with. All right, all we'll do is we'll hook everything up. I'll show you the controller here, then we'll take it upstairs and chuck it in the pool. With our tether, one short end comes from the inside of the reel. That's the side we're going to attach to our base station. The other end is the one we can unroll, and that's the end we're going to put to the ROV. You get a few little spare bits and pieces with the unit, some caps that go over these ports to stop water getting in. You also get a few of these little knobs for attaching the arm that holds the phone to the controller. A few other screws for attaching your ballast modules. But you also get a set of these O-rings. So this is what we're going to check first. These are the O-rings that seal the tether connector onto the unit. This is the O-ring here that comes pre-installed. And this is the one we need to keep an eye on. If that gets sort of worn, damaged, whatever, need to swap it out for a new one because that's what seals this connector when the ROV is underwater. Generally with O-ring connectors like that, you're not looking to, you know, squeeze the life out of them because they will stop sealing if you tighten them too much, but you don't want it to be loose. So just get it nice and snug. 
What I'm going to do now is turn the base station on. It's just got a switch on the bottom, on off. Pretty straightforward. Lights. I think that's the funky boot song. I'm using an iPhone for this, but obviously there's an Android version of the app as well. At the moment it's saying it's disconnected, so we need to get it connected to both the base station and the controller. The controller's got a bracket for holding your phone. It can actually hold a tablet as well. Unfortunately, I don't own a tablet, which is a shame because the big screen would be awesome for this, but make do with what we got. Then here, this arm is adjustable and it can be tightened and loosened. And the tool for doing that is actually built into the arm. So you can use this to tighten it once you've got a position you like and it won't move at all. It's essentially a flathead screwdriver, but saves carrying a separate one. The other side of the bracket here is a ball joint. So you can adjust that, get it where you want, any orientation, and then just tighten up the collar to lock it off. So what we need to do, switch this controller on. The controller's got its own internal rechargeable battery recharged via a USB port on it. So that was nice and easy. So as soon as I turned it on, it's saying select a controller to connect. If we do select, connected. So that's nice and easy. Then what we need to do is I'm just gonna go up, gotta go to Wi-Fi settings, Wi-Fi, have a look for networks. There's the Gladius, connect that. Password on this I think was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And guess the default password. And now we're connected to that as well. So, go back to our app. Connected, start, and there you go. So that's the camera view through the ROV now. Lots of cool stuff happens through the app. You've got water temperature, depth of the actual unit. You've got its orientation, so you can see that in the bottom left as it moves. Then as we rotate it, you can see a compass heading on the unit here as we turn it. So you get quite a lot of information on the screen here. Another reason I'd actually really like to use a tablet for this, but we'll make do with what we got. Battery charge level up here. I'm not that familiar with it. This is the things I know so far. But what we'll do is we'll go and pop it in the water now and give it a test. All right, this is actually the exciting bit. Really looking forward to heading out with Paul tomorrow and going in the ocean, seeing what we see. But I really want to just use the pool as a chance to get my head around the controls and just familiarise myself with it before we contend with things like swell, you know, tide, current, all that kind of stuff. All right, I'll quickly just dump a couple of dive weights in the pool, give us something to look at. It's going to be cold, I only just refilled it today. After uh, the winter, We're not going to need a huge amount of the tether for this test, so let's pop it in. Just double check the connection's good. What you do is you hit the unlock button on here. Once you do, you'll see there, that's the camera view through the drone itself. When you hit unlock, it's a way of saying, you know, I'm in the water, I want you to go. As you can see, the thrusters are sort of running. What it's doing is it looks like it's mostly using that port side thruster. It's trying to keep itself at a set depth, but also keep itself level. It does all that automatically for you. It's really the step up that sort of modern drones have got these days for aerial drones, but you're seeing that same technology being put into ROVs these days. Makes it much easier to drive. Then on the controller, we've got backwards, forwards, down, and then I rotate left and right. That's our tether, we'll give it a bit of tether. What's particularly cool about diving is that if we use our stick here, so we're coming up slightly, you see there, but we go down, and in whatever depth it sits at, it holds that depth. So we don't have this thing where we're manually fighting buoyancy all the way. So there you can see that's the hose against the inlet there. Now, one of the really cool things as well, as well as holding depth in the water, there's a 
dial on the shoulder here on the right hand side and what that allows you to do is dial in an attitude in the water so that was more nose up You'll probably see it better with the uh, screen here so as we dial it to the left we're dialing in more of a nose down attitude if you're trying to see what's on the bottom so we're going to cruise around and see if we can find ourselves a view of these lead ingots here I'm just going to rise up slightly and then we're going to pitch down there we go and that gives you a really nice view of the bottom running along that attitude at the moment this is set to a medium speed mode so I'm actually going to set it to low there we go Ooh, bumping the controls at the time same time then we'll angle down again just using that dial on the shoulder there we go then we'll go forward a bit there's our little ingots again Ooh, back it up there we go now what I can also do is roll the left shoulder and turn our lights on so this is the illumination now provided by the gladius itself get a little bit closer dial down our pitch a little bit so there's quite a few settings there's quite a few settings for the uh, lights as you can see I can roll them right down or roll them right up and there you can see that's it with the lights on So I'm going to tilt, tilt up a bit, there it is, Come down a bit. So if I bring the drone back here and then press lock, it'll just stop all the uh, all the thrusters going and it'll just float. So there we go, pretty successful first test run. There's a button for lock on the screen here, but there's also a hard button for it here on the controller, which is awesome because this is one of your main sort of start-stop type buttons for the drone. Although it's fair to say it is a reasonably controlled environment here in the Dango Remote Underwater Nautical Knowledge Testing and Navigation Kindergarten, it uh, isn't perfectly calm because the filter is running and all the side jets are currently on so it's actually got water pushing it from a lot of different directions so although it does make it nice and easy for a first test to get your you know your eye in it's not actually completely still water Sunday morning now meeting Paul in about 15 minutes we're going to head out to Lion Island and do some sort of tests in the ocean so what I'm going to do now is just pack it up chasing make a backpack for the Gladius Mini as well so we'll get everything packed up head down to the boat and get out offshore they also supply this nice sort of terry toweling cloth for uh, setting up and wiping it down and all that kind of thing. There's no tools needed for getting the controller stand apart. It's just a screw here. You get two spare ones of these in case you lose it as well, which is really nice. Can't have enough spares. All right. That's everything we need. I've got the uh, cap for there. Not that we probably need it. Ah, almost forgot. What we do need to do
is swap our uh, fresh water ballast for our salt water ballast. So I'll just grab a screwdriver. They give you quite a lot of spare screws as well if you lose those or they get corroded or whatever. Yeah, quite a difference in weight. So we'll pop our salt water in. All right, let's get going. Just see if we drift back. All right. All right, here we are, Lion Island, anchored. I think we're holding, we're getting up towards the top of the tide, so the incoming tide should stop soon. We're trying to get slack water so we're not fighting our current too much. But uh, let's get this unpacked again and see how we go. Jammer should have been here. This controller looks like totally his thing. Oh, totally. <laughs> the Xbox guru. That's it. All right, let's put that there for a second. This is our base station, so we'll pop this somewhere. Yeah, uh, hold on to that for a sec. So our gizmo. So let's make sure we get the right end of the tether. Sweet! Should drive enough polish in there. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Alright mate. Good to go? Good to go. He's away. Alright. Controller. I feel like we should have done some sort of test before we let that go. <laughs> this is a test. Oh, I see. Ah. Oh, we have, we have engines. Go down. Alright. accomplished. Well, all in all, 
I'd say a highly successful first weekend of, of using the Gladius Mini. It pretty much worked flawlessly, you know. I, uh, I really don't know what I expected, to be honest with you, but it's, I guess, more controllable than I thought. I think due to the fact that it holds its depth and holds its attitude, you really kind of do the driving. It does the, you know, the stabilization in the water. And I think that makes a huge difference from, say, completely manual units. Before we uh, wrap up, I just want to mention we've got those two meetups planned in the US at the moment. We've got Saturday the 21st at a Doug's house in Tulsa, and I'll put the link in the description for that. And I've also got a second one organized at Pasadena in California on Friday the 27th, the evening. There's a link in the description for an RSVP site, so if you intend to turn up to that one, can you please jump on that link and register that you wish to attend. I'm trying to organize something in New York City as well, or around that area. I'll be in New York on the 8th and 9th of September, and I think all we really need is someone local to pick a venue, say, look, this is a good place we can turn up, you know, even if there's 20 or 30 of us, you know, it won't be a problem space-wise. And if you get in touch with me and say you found a good venue, we'll just lock in a time, advertise it, and we'll just all plan to meet there. I think that's going to be the easiest thing to do. Once I get the trawler back on the water and the engine back in it, the ROV is going to appear in a lot more videos. We're going to be doing a lot of underwater search, wreck hunting, all that kind of stuff down the track. So you'll definitely be seeing it again. I'll put a link in the description to the chasing website so you can take a look at the specs and things if you're interested. I'm personally going to be using it mostly for our underwater searching, that kind of stuff, but I think it also can just be a lot of fun for having a having an explore. Paul and I were sort of joking on, on deck of the boat saying, you know, this is how we're going to do our winter diving from now on. Sitting on deck, warm, cup of tea, you know, seeing the underwater world without actually even getting wet, which is kind of cool. In case you're wondering, during the week I got the entire engine bay uh, cleaned up, primed and about two thirds painted with the top coat. So I'll be finishing that this week and then those skin fittings will finally arrive this week as well and we'll pop those in. So take care and I'll catch you then. See ya.